So, what do we have today? Polaroid launches the world's cutest action camera. Reddit found out about Dark Sky Finder. And a Volcano ate a GoPro. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody, and welcome to Aperture Chat. This is our Monday news thingy. Uh, I'm Tom. I'm Ryan. This is Elliot, and I don't know how long he's going to stay here, but hi, Elliot. So, it's Monday. We do news. We do news on Mondays. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I actually, this this is kind of fun for me. This is the first one I put here on the paper. We got our cheat sheets back. I, I printed up cheat sheets again. Oh, yeah. Um, Good to have. Yeah. Um, Homestar Runner is back. Like, yeah, I wish I cared more. You're too young. You don't. You, 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 you are too young for the Homestar Runner. I'm not too young. I just never, never came across it. Really, like it just never was part of my. It's so funny. I love Homestar Runner. Now you're probably sitting there at home going, "What the hell do they care if Homestar Runner came back?" Because it's, you know, this is a photography podcast. Um, it's back, and it's funny because they did an entire music video about fisheye lenses. So that's about as much about photography as it as it is. But it's hysterical. I will put a link to it because it's it is just. Hilarious to go watch. It's a new episode. They have not. They made a April Fool's episode that they really meant to be an April Fool's joke, uh, and but they, the feedback they got from it was immense. I mean, they haven't made a new episode in like four years. Yeah, I was in college, so four or five years, and they put that up just, and they didn't tell anybody. They just put it up, but people still go to their site so often that when it came out, it like hit Reddit and hit everything. Mm -hmm. People were like, you have to go see this. Ah. And then they were like, okay, maybe we'll put some new content out. And then just out of nowhere, uh, the other day, just poof, we got a new video and it just popped up and you know, we went you on the site. It's still a flash animation. It's still in a little tiny window. So like, like I used to watch it on a low res monitor and it take up most of the screen. It's the same pixel size. So I watch it on my giant high res screen for editing photos. It's like this big. <laughs> It actually go zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, so it would take up the whole screen because there's no full screen button on it. That's strange. I don't know why they'd still do that. Dude, that's off. Nostalgia. It's yeah, it's true. It's nostalgia, but you can edit it in Flash. Like cyanide and happiness is all yeah. made in Flash. So. Oh yeah, they could have, but they didn't because that's no, that's, that's cool. the way they are. Um, but yeah, they did. They basically, they took uh, a couple of minutes and made it. Well, it probably took them quite a while, but you you could spend a couple of minutes watching it. Yeah, that's cool. Well, like I said at the beginning of the opening, Polaroid is joining the action camera market for some reason. And they came out you with can the, never have too many action cameras. The, the Polk 3 Cube. Um, they, on Amazon, build it as the world's funnest, cutest lifestyle action camera. Uh, it is tiny. It is smaller than a golf ball, so it's about this big. It's a 6 megapixel CMOS sensor. It's 70, 720 resolution or 1080 resolution, at 30 frames a second, obviously. Um, the one 24 degree lens, it's roughly GoPro-like in some way. It's so tiny, the battery is so small, it gives you 90 minutes of recording per charge. 90 minutes of continuous recording, which is sort of funny. Um, it's, it's, it's a really stylized little cube with a lens in the front. It's like this big. So the, the, does this, like the Polo, the new Polaroid, um, inst, uh, what do they call it? The, it was like an Insta, Instamax, but it actually just Bluetooth to your phone and uploads to Instagram yeah, automatically. Instagram camera. Is um, it, does it stylize to look like the Instagram logo like that one was? Pretty much. It's, it's a it's a colored cube with uh, the, the Polaroid rainbow lines around the oh, side, okay. basically. It's very, it's such a strange little device. It's, it has this little plug in the back. So it's a little cube about this big and has a screw-in plug for um, a micro SD card, which is actually sort of big compared to its size. Uh, I never thought I'd hear someone refer to a yeah, micro SD card as big. big. <laughs> like it fits in. It looks like it's the right size. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a very weird, and the best part about it is that they sell all of the same mounting hardware that you would see with like a GoPro for this little cube. <clears throat> so they have like a waterproof mount and uh, a handlebar mount, and it's hundred. So the MSRP is a hundred dollars. They're selling for okay. ninety nine dollars on. Amazon. So they're cutting way under the oh, yeah. GoPro. This price. is a little toy thing, but the fact that it's not innately waterproof, like it's it's weatherproof, so it'll like splash proof, but it's not actually submergible. Yep. The fact that it's not just completely waterproof by itself is really funny because <laughs> they sell the little waterproof box. Like, it's like, like the waterproof box is this big. Why? It's like it's it's. I don't know. 
You could sample because some kid is going to take it on the water ride at Disney World. It's just really funny. But anyway, look that up. It's funny. Really. So I came across something, as Ryan said in the opening with Reddit, that I had heard of but never used before. And I thought this was a whole big deal. And it turns out it's not. Yeah, I've used uh, it for three years or so. But the whole thing, the whole reason it showed up on Reddit was not the fact that someone just found it and put it on Reddit. Um, what we're talking about is Dark Sky, which is basically a Google Maps overlay that shows you how much light pollution is in any given area. And the big thing is the, the, the map has been stagnant since 2010. I shouldn't say stagnant. It's been, it was 2013 update. Yeah. What they just put up was the 2014 update. They actually said when I went to the Dark Sky website, we've replaced the 2010 overlay data with 2014 overlay data. Hmm. Yeah, I think that, that So that was the big reason why I showed up on Reddit is, hey, the data's up to date now. So, um, yeah, it's very interesting. So it's like a heat map for a Google Google overlay. So very like just like Google can zoom way in, you can see very surprisingly detailed data on what the light pollution level is. And it's a scale of 10 different levels. I think it's 1 to yeah. 100, and you get, they color by 10. Um, it's very interesting that it gives you a place to look. The best part about that website is not the heat map. The heat map is cool to look at, but the the very best part about that website, because it's been around for like five years or more, yeah. um, there are lots of pins, and the pins are all detailed locations for viewing and doing astrophotography and doing anything. It's like, and some of them are more detailed than others. One of the ones I was looking at going to had no more information than it's like a set of coordinates with like meadows, and that's it. Like it's a middle of New Hampshire meadows, and you you can go to these places and see what people meant and whether it's a public place and get your night of sky viewing in the dark yeah. place at the best but, plot. But best some plot. of the pins have great information like there are bathrooms nearby or there's oh, yeah. a park, park, yeah. park well, a quarter mile south of here and walk up and things right. like that. So some of the pins are really, really well, useful. They're, they're all useful. Well, they're all useful, but some of them are really detailed mm -hmm. and some of them are just like, like you said, meadows. Yeah, it's, it's, great. it's great to see. It's a very, very good resource. Um, it's tough you don't drive and travel a lot because generally we live in a place that's completely ruined. So this is unfortunately true. We, we zoomed all the way in on Rhode Island and found like a handful of places in like that are even barely at absolute dark, which yeah. means most of the year they probably aren't. Yeah. Um, which for us too, the, the whole twilight thing and we're at higher, you know, higher latitudes, it's, it's for us getting absolute dark is a bit of a trip and is yeah. a rather smaller window than you'd think for most of the areas we go. Yeah. Um, it is It is worth it though. Even if you haven't done it a lot, even going to some of the lower ends, like not necessarily the absolute dark, but the lower end ones, it's a it's an eye-opening thing. You don't you don't quite realize what it really looks like until yeah. you take the time to go out and see it. I mean, when, I, when I lived out west, when I lived out in Nebraska and Wyoming, you, you could get out of town and drive for about 15 minutes and be in those zero areas because there's nothing there. I mean, you know, it's a 15 minute drive to zero darkness and you're like oh my god there's nothing here you know, like i can see all of the stars and satellites now is very cool it's, yes it's, it's if you ever need a really nice indication of what year it is the number of satellites you see in the sky right now is amazing you see dozens of satellites in a night now even even 10 years ago when i was a kid you maybe saw one or two and it was kind of cool to see where they went yeah. now if you don't see three or four or five between the hours of nine and twelve, you, it's you're yeah. just not looking hard enough. Yeah, um, it's it's a vitally important tool for astrophotography stuff because it's basically impossible to do any sort of astrophotography in anywhere that's not like the lowest ten percent of light pollution. No matter how what you do, there's nothing you can compensate for for dark sky with astrophotography. Anytime you see cool astrophotography, it's absolutely taken in the last five percent of light pollution. Yeah, there's just no other. And, and like you, you, you know, some people are like, well, you can just stop down to like f24, f32. No, that still doesn't help. No, it doesn't mean anything. It's because just, if the light pollution's there, it's gonna find a way in. It's just it just takes a little longer, but you're also leaving your sensor open so long. Yeah, the picture you're taking is off is off the, the the exposure in front of you. So it's gonna wash out. It's gonna just it's gonna change every little dynamic of that photo. Oh, yeah. Because most of the stars you take pictures of are much lower much lower magnitude than the light pollution that you're getting. So yeah. it, it will just have no choice but to wash out those things. And even then, things like the moon also screw an astrophotography completely. Oh, yeah. So even if you're in a complete zero dark spot, it means nothing. 
you know, if, if the moon yeah, is out in full, it means absolutely nothing. Yeah, you've got to even time that to go out with the new moon so that there's no light yeah. on the moon and that all my Astrophotography is a, ton, is a topic that we could spend forever talking on, but we really can't because I don't do much of it and you do not that much of it, it either. Well, so. it takes, it just takes, the, the time commitment to do anything is very high. Yeah. So for one shot, you are spending an entire, an entire night behind a camera and not looking at it, essentially. You're just kind of making sure it doesn't disappear in the middle of the night. Because up here, there's nowhere that it couldn't just disappear. So you're sitting there, obviously, just not doing anything for a long period of time, which is nice, but it's its own. I'm usually drinking. Yeah. yeah absolutely honest with you. I'm usually, usually drinking. I've usually already drank and then <laughs> happened on that afterwards. Well, that's usually what starts it is we're camping and I'm like, hey, I want to go take pictures of stars. Uh, I go take pictures of stars and I'll just keep drinking because what else am I going to do? I mean, I, I, that or it's like campfire or it's passing on the picnic table face up. Yeah, it's good too. Um, yeah, camping. So, all right. So here is something very cryptic that I'm going to have to come back to on Wednesday when this counter, when this counter finally hits zero. To be wildly disappointed. To be wildly disappointed. So, so Canon, Canon put up a great disappointment machine. It's either going to be amazing or it's going to be highly disappointing. It's going to be an industrial tool. Right? I think it's going to be. I would bet money that it's going to be an industrial tool and not a piece of actual photography equipment. I think it's going to be video equipment. Nope. Why? Uh, so Canon put up, they have a, a website up which... I could put the link to, but there's really no point. By the time um, you see it, by the time you see it, it will already be gone. This is it right here. Uh, that's all you will see. I will read it to you. This message goes out to fear, doubt, logic, and reason. To excuses, distractions, procrastination, inertia, critics, cynics, realists, pessimists, resistance, conventional wisdom. To the peanut gallery, the so-called experts, the good enoughs, the urges to pass the buck, the easy way out, the snooze button, the panic button. And a little voice in the back of your head that says, it can't be done. To all of it, we apologize, because you are about to see, at Canon, we see the impossible. Um, and it has a little countdown timer. And as we're doing this, we're in hour 35 of the countdown, uh, which puts it sometime Tuesday morning. Yay. So, assuming yeah. I record the, the first one's a sentence fragment, right? They probably. Two excuses, distractions. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, if we record the Wednesday show on Tuesday, we'll have this to talk about. If we record it on Monday, we'll still be waiting on the countdown timer. And I'll do something special for Tuesday night after it's been released. Uh, there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of, obviously, when you put something like this out, the Canon rumors the boards... Disappointment coming. The Canon rumor boards are just lit up with... I want to see it be a chair. A really nice <laughs> chair. <laughs> that would be kind of awesome. I, I would actually probably be really impressed if it was like a chair. I would, I would, I would be much happier. Um, the, the big things that people are talking about on Canon rumors are that it is either the super high pixel EOS camera that's been talked about for almost two years now and nothing has ever come about to compete with the D810 because Canon doesn't make anything that's as high a megapixel as the D810. Or it's going to be the launch of their medium format one. I honestly don't I, think it's I don't think it's going to be either of those. Given, I, given the media and promotions that it's going through, no way in hell. I think it's going to be something in the cinema line, like a C550 or something. Nope. But I think it's going to be Machine X that no one will understand what it is, and there'll be plenty of podcasts explaining what the frig this thing is that they just made, because they're not putting much money into marketing this. If it was like this huge revolution in camera, it would have been on like the nightly news last night. You know, yeah. it's people are so hungry for stories that this is obviously not. It would have been leaked as a bigger story intentionally. Through the magic of television, the cat has left. If you're watching this on your television, that is. I'm not sure anyone ever has. No, this is the only way Cole watches it. He watches it on the YouTube channel on his Xbox. He has a Chromecast, though. He does that, too, but he told me specifically he watches it on his Xbox. It's probably through the Chromecast, too. But. <laughs> cool. So, yeah. Um, Canon. Sweet. All right. So I got I got two more articles here. Is it just two more? Uh, yeah, just two more. Two, and they're about this. They're both about drones, which is why I linked them together. Yeah, it's more about what's happening than actual drone-like things. Oh no, this this has nothing to do with drone drone technology. 
This is more to do with <laughs> the cat's getting his revenge. He found a toy. Um, this is uh, this has nothing to do with drone technology. This has everything to do with drones being used. And the first one is the one that I want to talk about is just the one that makes me laugh a lot. And the second one's actually kind of impressive. So we'll end on the high note. Um, now this is the this is the the headline that drove me into to actually look at this article. Man arrested and charged after allegedly shooting down camera drone. Allegedly. Allegedly. They found the shotgun that he used. But they, he hasn't been convic convicted of anything yet, so it's still allegedly. Um, but apparently, there was a guy in New Jersey who was having his house remodeled, and he flew his drone up to take pictures of the house being remodeled. <laughs> it's his house. He has every right to fly his drone and take pictures of his own stuff. I can't see any problem with this here. Have you seen any problem yet? No. Apparently, his neighbor had a problem with this. Took out a 12-gauge and shot the thing down out of the sky. Yeah, you also just can't be randomly shooting things anywhere. Yeah. So, uh, apparently, the owner of the drone, the, all the names have been redacted until this gets done in, in the police. Um, but the owner of the drone said he was flying it around his home, capturing photographs, when he heard several gunshots and immediately lost control of the drone. I tell you what, if I heard a couple of gunshots and my drone stopped working, I'd probably have the same reaction he did. Be like, holy shit, what just happened? Uh, upon retrieving his drone, he recognized the shotgun, the, the holes that you know, would be shotgun pellets. Mm -hmm. Oh, got shot by a shotgun. He's like, oh, I got shot by a shotgun. Uh, in which he called the police and, you know, told them, well, I think it came from this direction. And it turned out to be his neighbor who was sitting on the back deck and... They arrested the neighbor for, um, let's see, I want to get these right. Possession of a weapon for an awful purpose and criminal mischief. Hey, how'd you find that faster than me? Because I didn't I'm highlight it. I'm surprised I said it correctly. You got it exactly right. Uh, and, and they aren't talking about why he shot the drone down yet. Probably because he only told the cops and nobody knows yet. So, uh, it doesn't really matter. No, it's just, <laughs> why be an ass and shoot it out of the sky? That's well, why he went I to know. jail with... He did, he did go to jail. He paid 25 It does tell us that he paid $2,500 in bail, and he will probably have to pay to replace the drone and the camera. Oh, yeah. He's, he's assuming he has money. Yeah. Well, so apparently it wasn't a bad neighborhood. It's just the guy I mean, yeah. just, you know, was nuts and said, I'm going to shoot this. Right. At least he went to jail. Yeah. So... Our second yeah. drone story is the way other one. Than the this. other one is, is quite good. Uh, so, if you thought flying your drone through exploding fireworks was even remotely impressive, the flying it so close to a volcano that it melts um, is very, very interesting. And by it melting, it's the GoPro melting and not actually the drone itself. Yeah. So, uh, he took a DJI Phantom. This is Eric Chen, one of the guys. Oh. He's, he's the VP of aerial photography for DJI. Well, so that's probably a good thing that he didn't go much closer. Yeah, because when he retrieved the drone, the D Hero 3 Plus was pretty much liquid. Yeah. So you see him retrieving the drone with large gloves because it was very hot. Yeah. They said <laughs> the, the card inside was just fine. Yeah. So, it's not that melted. He said barely yeah. melted. It's, no. still a, it's still a GoPro. It, and it's just it, kind You of can't see on the, you know, the Hero's toast, but you can't see out the lens anymore. No. I mean, it's obviously very melted. Yeah. I'm surprised the drone isn't more melted, to be honest. Very well. <clears throat> but what makes this funny is this is in Iceland. They went to Iceland to get this shot because apparently I can't even pronounce this name of this volcano yeah. that's erupting currently that's in kind Iceland. Of a joke. Um, so they went out there, they got all the right permits, they drove all the way up as close as they could get, which is one point two miles away. And they flew the drone in and they would hit the, the cutoff point, it would fly back, and they went through this several times getting footage. And then I guess the police officer who was there said, well, technically the law only says you can't drive closer to the yeah. volcano. You can walk as close as you want. I just can't tell you that it's a good idea. And so they did. They walked like another like quarter mile quarter mile up so they could get, so they could hit the, the safe zone, the, the transmit zone a quarter mile closer. And that's when they finally melted it. Yeah, and it's Iceland, the cops are nice. Yeah. It's actually, that was an internet article. It was yeah. Icelandic cops and why they're funny. Yeah. So, you know, they were, so they, they flew it out. The video is up on their website. Yeah, it's I didn't all, actually get to it's watch It's actually trending on 
YouTube. Did not get to watch the video. I'm sure it's really freaking cool. Oh, it, it's cool. I'll put a link to that too because it it was it was pretty funny because you actually see towards the end of the video you can see where everything's warping and distorting because the lens is melting in front of you. So if you ever wanted to see what it would look like if your camera went into a fire, this is the way to do it. Well, one of the ways. <laughs> well, without losing it. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's very cool. Let someone else lose their camera so you can see what it looks like going into, into, a, into an active volcano. Oh, yeah. And then the morning after they, they did this, the whole side of the mountain where they were standing was a giant field of lava. So yeah. they had that to going for them. Yeah. So had they been there 12 hours later, it would, they would have been. had to drive away. Yeah. <laughs> so that was dope. Uh, that is some pretty impressive drone yeah. footage, and I'm glad that the guys at, at DJI are getting out there and pushing their stuff to the limits. You gotta wonder if they use the stock blades or if they went to. Yeah, I think they had like you no. Know, I think they use the stock stuff, but they might have used something like a carbon fiber blade or something that could take a little more heat. I'm not sure if carbon fiber actually would. Is it carbon fiber can take more heat than plastic? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. that's cool though. Yeah, so that that is that was really cool. Um, that's all I've got for news today. It's a quick one tonight. Yeah, me too. All right. So that's a, that's a quick hit from us this week for the news. Um, we kind of covered a whole lot coming out of Photokina last week. Oh, yeah. And everyone, everyone shuts up for a while. So. And then, yeah, everyone really kind of shuts up for a while, which is why you're not seeing much gear news except for the Polaroid stuff because Polaroid they just do whatever they want whenever they want. Uh, it wasn't really news. I just kind of found it. Yeah. So it's a little quiet for news just because it's the first week back from Photokina where everyone's not talking about all the stuff they saw at Photokina. Uh, so that's it for the news. Uh, it's Like I said, it's a light and quiet week. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. At, well, we have the Bucket Castle photo page, which is where we host the Apture Chat stuff. And you can find me on Apture to Pixels there or my website, which is Apture to Pixels.com. Uh, and if you're anywhere in New England and you got a band and you want to see some awesome pictures, you should give me a call. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say them all, say them all. And similarly, I'm at peacepointphoto.com, peacepointphoto, Facebook, peacepoint at Twitter, or anything else probably with my name is roughly something I would do. Uh, that's where to go for weddings especially. If anything else, I have a ton of things on the internet, mostly at uh, flickr.com slash rps, r-p-e-a-s-e which is a lot of cool stuff. So that's it for tonight. Yeah, no, that's it. We, uh, we're we going to call it a night. Right. See you later. later.